Justine, and today in this video, we're gonna be talking about some of my favorite highlights from Sony's CES presentation that their CEO gave during the event. Now, if you guys missed it, no worries, I've got you covered. huge Sony fan, especially when it comes to cameras, movies, TVs, and gaming. But what I really loved about this presentation was the bigger picture, like their prototype car, the Vision S, the way that they are leading the path in virtual production, and Sony's drone, the Airpeak. So the last CES that I attended in real life, I got a chance to check out their prototype of the Vision S in person. Now since then, they've continued to develop on this concept with more advanced technology for electric vehicles. Sony also unveiled the Vision S2. This is a new SUV type prototype vehicle, as well as the establishment of Sony Mobility. I am so sold on the electric car future, so it's really great to see some of the possibilities in the ways that Sony sensors, their 360 reality audio, and all of their cameras are being integrated into their Vision S. Now the Vision S is using this beautiful panoramic screen. It has digital side mirrors and conveniently placed control panels to minimize eye movement. The digital side mirrors are actually really cool, and it's awesome because it's like, it's not actually a mirror, it's digital, so it's like a camera that is showing you what's behind you, so you're not really looking in a mirror at all. Sony has such a huge library of content with music and movies, and these can be implemented into the screens for backseat entertainment. So if you're in the backseat, you can listen to music, you can watch movies, and if you've never experienced 360 reality audio, it is so impressive. Each of these seats have their own individual speakers, so it'll create this individual sound field for each seat. Even getting a demo of this car a few years ago, it was actually mind-blowing how amazing it sounded. This concept has 40 sensors. There's 18 cameras, 18 radar, and four LiDAR that are all around the vehicle to assist with improving the driving experience. Now using all of these sensors, it will give you a 360 view around the car. So that'll assist with things like autonomous parking and lane changing. I feel like I could talk about this car the entire video, but there are more things to cover, like virtual production. Okay, all right, just, I'm gonna sit down for this because I am still kind of processing how incredible this is for the future of production. This tech is being implemented into more shows and movies than I think anyone even realizes. And Sony has been leading this initiative and I got a chance to check this out in action a few years ago when they first announced it at CES. And since then, it has only gotten better. Like, okay, check this out. So instead of using traditional green screen or even practical sets, these worlds and environments are being built out virtually. Now, whether they're building them out in 3D or actually going out and filming these environments, they're using Sony crystal LED tech, so they're able to shoot in front of these displays as if they're actually in these locations. And this gives you the ability to transport to exotic locations very quickly and very easily. And I have been on a bunch of sets when you're out in like the middle of a desert and the temperature and just being out in the elements, not gonna lie, kind of sucks. So this is something that I'm so excited for. And I'm just going to say, if anybody needs me to be in any, you know, upcoming films or anything, hi, I'm here. I'm ready. I'm available. And with the Sony Venice, which is definitely something that may be a little bit too high tech for my studio, but I would really love to check one out. This camera is able to maximize the crystal LED with its precise capturing. And it's so exciting to see all of these behind the scenes shots of how production is actually getting taken to the next level. When you see these final movies and TV shows and stuff, on your screen, being able to take a step back and actually see how they're doing it is really fascinating. They also have the ability to rig these cameras and the sets so that it'll interact with the camera movement. So the environment will be able to move realistically if you're actually there in whatever set that they've chosen. I can only hope to one day shoot something really cool on one of these. Okay, also no secret that I'm a huge fan of drones and I love everything about them, from flying them to editing the shots that I've got afterwards. So when Sony first gave a sneak peek of the air peak, I was so excited. And this isn't really a drone for everyday consumers, but it's definitely targeting more professional creators. It looks pretty similar to some of the higher end drones that you may have seen in the past, but all of this tech was developed in house by Sony to achieve maximum flight performance. All the key components are originally designed by Sony, like the propellers to the motors to the ESC. It has superior wind resistance with high precision sensors and a refined flight algorithm that allows air peak S1 to accurately determine 
determine its environment, location, and positioning to keep low level flight shake to a minimum. And if you've ever flown drones, especially on low level, kind of ironic that that is something that I enjoy doing more than flying them up super high because you're getting this perspective that is really difficult to get in any other way than if you were flying a drone. This does sometimes cause a problem because if you are filming very low and you're getting a lot of wind resistance from not only the drone and the propellers pushing down on the ground, it's definitely a difficult situation when you're flying super low. So I'm really excited to test this out. This is also currently one of the world's smallest drones in its class, and it can carry a full frame alpha mirrorless camera. There is an AirPeak flight app that goes with it. So it'll let you adjust camera settings in the controls. It has a dual operation mode. So you'll be able to have someone pilot and then someone else control the gimbal to get the right shots. There are automated flight modes like mission flights, and this will let you follow a preset route. And then you can also do a repeat route and that will let you retrace a previous one. I think this is really cool because I feel like there's a lot of times where there's some really cool things happening and you want to kind of do that same shot over and over again. And to try to fly that exactly is pretty difficult. So the fact that you can just repeat what you just did, definitely excited to try that out. Speaking of drones, this is wild. Sony is looking to actually take flight into space. Now in 2020, Sony launched the Sony Space Entertainment Project in partnership with the University of Tokyo and JAXA to open up space experiences that usually were only reserved for astronauts. They just rebranded it to Star Sphere. And on the show floor at CES, they showcased a full scale mock-up of the nano satellite that they are aiming to launch in 2022. That is supposedly happening this year. It's so awesome. It has Sony's camera technology built into it. And when it's paired with the navigational software, the users will be able to adjust camera settings, the angle of the view, the composition of the moon, the sun, and the stars, all using a shooting simulator. Like, just can we stop for a minute? Like this is flying a, essentially a drone in space. It's so mind blowing to think that this is the near future. Like this is something that is allowing space exploration to become more accessible to everyday people. So like, hi, uh, sign me up. Okay, so another highlight was seeing Tom Holland talk about his work on the Uncharted movie that is due out in theaters in February. I just love that this was like an original PlayStation game and now it's being brought to life with Tom Holland. Now I'm not gonna lie, he might be having a little fangirl moment. I mean, he's not even here. I mean, I've never even met him. I don't even know him. He doesn't even know I exist, but I think this is so freaking exciting. I have loved his portrayal of Spider-Man, so I cannot wait to see what he does with Nathan Drake's character. He also said that to be able to really channel Nathan, he played the game a ton to understand and develop this character arc. Now, it's crazy because if you've ever been on set or if you've ever heard people talk about being on set and filming movies, there's a lot of downtime. I like to say that sometimes when I'm on a, a big set for a big production that I could shoot about 45 YouTube videos in the amount of time that I've spent <laughs> sitting around, which means Tom may have had a little bit of downtime to play some Uncharted in the trailer for, for research. Right, we're just gonna call it research. Either way, I am so hyped to check that out when it's in theaters. Let me know in the comments below if you're excited to see it as well. Now, for those of us who have been waiting very patiently to hear about the next version of the Sony PlayStation VR, wait no more, it's here. It has new sensory features, it has enhanced controls and tracking. The eye tracking software will actually allow you to have more control and interactivity. The headset has feedback, so players can feel subtle responsive feedback. It's 4K HDR with 110 degrees field of View, and there's even all new PlayStation VR 2 Sense controllers. These will allow you to feel and interact with games in a much more visceral way. Knowing how much I love the PS5 DualSense controllers, I am so excited to try out the new PlayStation VR 2 controllers and the headset as well. I'll also just be here patiently waiting for them to release more information about it. Whenever the time comes, I'm gonna be here. Just I'm just waiting, this is me waiting. So those are a few of the bigger picture things from Sony that I'm super excited about. I honestly just keep thinking about virtual production and like what that's gonna look like for the future. Like we basically can go anywhere at any time in any place. And oh, it's gonna just really change the way that movies and films and TVs and things are created. I feel like now we have this expectation to have content turned out way quicker than it's able to actually be produced. So with things like this, we're gonna be getting way more content way quicker. Anyway, one of the best ways that you guys can keep up to 
to date with everything going on in the world of Sony is by checking out square.sony.com. I am definitely super excited about all of the things that are coming out and I can't wait to show them to you. If you guys have anything that you'd like to see me cover here on my channel, feel free to leave it in the comments below and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.